Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie and on my channel I like to do videos involving DIY woodworking tutorials, home improvement projects, room makeovers, really anything home related. I've been getting a lot of questions lately on how I use SketchUp to design my projects and really just where to start in general when taking on these projects that seem so overwhelming. I went over to Instagram and asked you guys if you wanted a SketchUp tutorial and so many of you said yes. So today I I'm going to take a step back and walk you guys through the entire process of how I plan and design my projects in SketchUp. The next big project that I'm working on is redoing my kitchen pantry. So I thought this would be the perfect time to take you guys through the planning and designing phase of my next big project. I do use the free version of SketchUp to design most of my projects. So if you like this video and want me to post more like it, let me know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up so I know to post more videos like this in the future. When taking on a larger scale home project, there are about seven different steps that I go through in the entire planning process so I'm going to take you guys through each step like I would for my next pantry project so step number one is establish an end goal so some questions that I ask myself before every project what is the goal for the project what am I trying to accomplish and is there an actual need for this project for example my goal for this next pantry project is to create a more custom looking shelving system that is more sturdy than the current wire racks that we have right now. I also want to create better storage solutions that make our everyday lives easier because this is a room that we use a ton. Not only will this make our lives easier, it will add value to our home, it will set our home apart from others in the neighborhood that are exactly like it, I will save money doing it myself rather than hiring it out, and the most important, it will make me happy. These are all valid arguments arguments that I use when trying to convince my husband to let me demolish the house and spend a bunch of money. These arguments have worked pretty well for me in the past, so I welcome you to use them as well. So overall, establishing an end goal for your project will help in these initial phases of planning and designing your project. Step two is find inspiration for your project. So it's not easy to just look at a space and visualize what you want it to look like. So my number one source to go to for home inspiration is Pinterest. For this project, I actually made a pantry board and then I searched different terms like dream pantry or walk-in pantry or pantry organization goals whatever it may be and then I saved my top ideas to my Pinterest board so that I can go back and look at them at any time. Pick out what you like and what you don't like from different pictures so you can start to visualize what you want your space to look like. Step three is to make a rough draft. So get all the measurements for your space and draft it out on a piece of paper. You don't have to be the best artist, I'm not good at drawing, but doing this really helps you to visualize and try out different ideas. Step four is to design your plan in SketchUp, the one that you guys have been waiting for. Now I'm just going to share a screen recording of me designing my pantry in SketchUp. I'll go over the basic tools that I use for this project and for most of my other projects. I generally use the same tools. I'm not going to go over every single tool in detail, but there are tons of great YouTube tutorials that go into SketchUp way more more in depth. Okay, so for the free web-based version of SketchUp, we're going to go to app.sketchup.com. If this is your first time going to this site, you'll have to create a account. We can go ahead and start modeling. If this is your first time to the website, it'll take you through a quick tour, but I'm going to briefly go through all of the tools that I use for most of my projects. So I'll definitely use the select tool, this eraser tool I won't use too much. I just use the delete key on my keyboard. You can use this paint tool to paint the surfaces of your project. This line tool I don't use very much. Same with the arc tool, you can make different arcs. I do use this rectangle tool a lot. Um, you can also do different shapes like circles and polygons. I use this push-pull tool, this outer shell tool I don't use. I will occasionally use this move tool as well as this rotate tool to rotate different objects. I use this tape measure tool pretty frequently. I don't use this walk tool and then the orbit tool I use to view every angle of my project. I also use a mouse um, that seems to work best with SketchUp. You can use the scrolling feature on your mouse to zoom in and out 
and you can also use the right click feature, which I find really helpful. On the right panel here, I don't use a lot of this stuff. I will use the 3D warehouse occasionally. Um, in the warehouse, you can find um, different models, collections, catalogs. You can find different furniture on here. For the pantry project, I'm actually going to search for some kitchen cabinetry. You can also search profiles. So if you look up Home with Stephanie, you'll find the projects that I have done in here. So I've uploaded my closet project and I will also upload the pantry project as well. On the bottom right here, this is where the measurement panel is and this is where you can adjust all the measurements for the shapes and the lines that you make. So those are the tools that I use for most of my projects. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this lady here. Don't need her. Now I already took the measurements of my pantry and I'm gonna put the exact measurements here in SketchUp so I know exactly what the closet is going to look like to scale. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the back wall of my pantry. Now the actual interior dimension is 56 inches, but to make my whole wall and to account for all the other walls, I'm gonna make this 65 inches. So I'm gonna take this rectangle tool. I'm gonna to start in this back corner. I'm going to click and drag my mouse to kind of where I think um, the wall will be. Measurements don't have to be exact here in the lower right hand corner. I'm gonna click anywhere and then I can enter in my exact measurements. So you don't actually need to click in the dimension box, just type it in to your keyboard. So I'm going to do four and a half inches thick for the thickness of my wall and then a comma and then this will be 65 inches long. So I'm gonna type in a measurement and then press enter. So now it's to scale, I'm gonna zoom in and take my push pull tool, click on the top surface of this rectangle and then pull it up. I can click anywhere and then I will type in eight feet and click enter. So that wall is done. Before I start drawing anything else on here, I need to make this a component so that it is all grouped into one object. If I don't group everything, then if I want to try and move it, it's gonna just move whichever surface that I click on and I don't want that. So if you take the arrow tool, click three times and then do a right click, select make component and we're just going to name this wall one. Okay, so now when I try to move this wall, I move the entire wall and not just the surface that I click on. So that's the first wall. I'm gonna go ahead and make the second wall. So we'll click on the rectangle tool. I'll go back to this corner and drag out the wall to where I kind of think it should be. And then I'll type in my exact measurements. So this one is gonna be 60 and a half inches by four and a half inches. Then I'll take the push pull tool and pull it up to eight feet. I'll get it somewhere close and then type in eight feet, click enter. And there are my two back walls. I'm gonna take the arrow tool, click three times, right click, make component, and this will be wall two. Okay, I'm gonna make the next two small walls. So I'll take the rectangle again, zoom in here to this corner and drag it out to kind of where I think it should be. And then I'll enter in the measurements. So this one is gonna be 25 and a half inches by four and a half inches enter and then I'll bring it up to height eight feet again and there is that wall I'll make this wall three okay then I'll make my last wall zoom out here to the other corner rectangle tool start in the corner here This one is gonna be the same measurement as the other wall, 25 and a half inches by four and a half inches. 
We'll drag it up to eight feet. And this will be wall four. Okay, so I have a door here, but I'm just gonna leave this open so we can see the full pantry. I'm gonna add a quick floor in here. So I'm gonna rotate this so I can see the entire bottom of the pantry. Take the rectangle tool, start in a corner, and I'll drag it all the way out right there. And then I'm gonna take the push-pull tool and bring this down like three quarters of an inch. So it looks like a floor. I'll make my floor another component. Triple click, then right click, make component. And that's the floor, that's okay. Okay, so now I have the basic outer shell of my pantry. And here's where you can just kind of mess around with different measurements and objects inside your pantry. I'm gonna go into the warehouse and search for a kitchen cabinet. So I'm going to use some upper kitchen cabinets from Home Depot and I already have the dimensions and everything. So I'm gonna search for a cabinet in here, just a basic upper cabinet. So I'm gonna try to find just a basic upper kitchen cabinet that I can edit and adjust the size to the same one that I found from Home Depot. So this one looks pretty good. I'm gonna click download. I'll place it anywhere here on the outside. Now the cabinet that I'm going to buy is 12 inches deep. So I'm gonna check the depth of this cabinet with my measurement tool. I'll click on the back here and bring it all the way to the front. So this is about one foot seven inches. So. I'm gonna mark where my cabinet should be, which is one foot, 12 inches deep. And then I'm going to adjust the cabinet and bring it back to this size. So it's only 12 inches deep. I'm gonna take this scale tool and click on my cabinet here and bring it all the way back here to 12 inches. Okay, so I'm gonna measure this again just to verify. Yep, that's one foot. Now I want the length to be 30 inches. So I'm just gonna click anywhere and type in 30 inches. And that shows right here is 30 inches. So I'm gonna take my scale tool again, take this outer edge and bring it in to 30 inches. Um, You'll see when you make a measurement and click, it'll uh, these lines will appear and you can just click on them and delete them when you're done using them as a guide. Okay, so we've got the, the depth and the length of my cabinet. Now I wanna change the height. The height is also 30 inches, so I'll take the measurement tool. And we'll measure up 30 inches. We'll take the scale tool and bring this whole cabinet down to 30 inches. So I'm actually gonna need two of these cabinets. So I'm just gonna use the keys on my keyboard. I'll click on the, on the cabinet, Command C to copy and Command V to paste. And then I can place it anywhere. This one I'm gonna place on this side. Okay, so I don't want my kitchen cabinets to sit directly on the floor in my pantry. So I'm going to build a base out of two by fours. So I'm going to take this rectangle tool and this back two by four here will be about 30 inches. And I'm gonna use the actual size of the two by four. So it'll be one and a half inches by 30 inches. Oh, I did that wrong. I'll do 30 inches by one and a half inches. There we go, that looks better. And then I'm going to take the push-pull tool and drag that up three and a half inches because that's 
the size that the two by four would actually be. Okay, I'm gonna make this a component. We'll just name it base one. So for the second part of the frame, I'm gonna build it right on the face of that two by four. And this measurement should be one and a half inches by three and a half inches. Okay, and I want this piece to be 12 inches. So I'll pull it out, click, type in 12 inches, press enter, make this a component. Call it base two. And I'm going to copy and paste this piece, command C, command V, and we'll paste it right on the end there. Now I want to copy this back base piece, command C, command V, and we'll paste it right there. Okay, now I'm gonna select all of these objects. So I'm gonna select one, hold the shift key down, and press on all the other ones. I'm going to copy and paste, so I can paste the entire frame and move it to the other side of the pantry where I need my frame to be. I'll take this move tool, move it back into the corner. I'm gonna rotate it. And keep moving it down until it gets in place. Okay, looks like I need to scoot it over some more. Okay, now that I have my frames in place, I'm gonna go ahead and place my kitchen cabinets on top. So I'll take my select tool, select the kitchen cabinets, take the move tool and move these into place. It's a little tricky to move things exactly where you want them, but I use the orbit tool to change my views so I know exactly where I need to move it. Okay, so this one is placed. So I'm actually going to leave a little bit of a gap here in the back because I couldn't find a cabinet that was deep enough. So I'm just gonna end up putting some little spacers back here and I'm gonna place my next cabinet just like I did with the other one. Okay, so I have my cabinets in place and now I'm going to build my shelves. So I'll have one L-shaped countertop that's gonna be 15 inches deep, and then three other shelves on top of it, and those are only gonna be 12 inches deep. So I'm gonna take this rectangle tool, come out to the very corner of my cabinet, and draw a rectangle here. Then I'm gonna take the push-pull tool and bring it up two and one-eighth inch. So I'll click there, type in two, and an eighth inch, enter, and that is going to be the size of my countertop. Okay, for this connecting shelf, I'm going to go in this corner and bring it up. And then I'm going to drag the face out 15 inches right there. So that's my bottom countertop. I'm gonna click all of these, right click, make component, and call this the countertop. Okay, so the spacing for all of my shelves is 13 and a half inches. So I'm gonna take my measurement tool, start at the top of this countertop, and bring it up 13 and a half inches. So I can click anywhere, type in 13 and a half inches, enter 
and this will be the bottom of my next shelf. So I'm going to take my rectangle tool, start here in the corner and go up. So this should be four feet, eight inches by two and an eighth of an inch. I'll take the push pull tool and pull this out to 12 inches. Okay, I'm gonna rotate to the other side and make my other shelf. I'm gonna start here in this bottom corner and bring it up and then pull it out 12 inches. Type in 12 inches, enter. Okay, I will click on both of these shelves Right click, make component, and this will be shelf one. Okay, so I'm gonna measure another 13 and a half inches up from this shelf. So I'll take my measurement tool, click here. I'm just gonna click anywhere and type in 13 and a half. Click enter, and this will be the bottom of my next shelf. So I will click on this shelf, copy and paste, and we'll bring it up to the next corner. Let's see, I'll have to bring it back down a little bit so it's on top of that measurement line. Okay, we're gonna add in one more shelf. So I'm gonna take my measurement tool, measure up 13 and a half inches again. 13 and a half inches. Click on this shelf, Command C, Command V, and bring it up to the next line. Okay, I'm gonna delete all of these measurement grid lines. And that is my pantry. Okay, so now that the pantry is finished, I can go ahead and play with the colors and the textures. So I'm gonna go to this paint bucket, go to colors. So I want my shelves to be white. Click the white color, they're already pretty white. This bottom one is gonna be stained a brown color. So I'll take something close here. This will be brown, these will be white. Let's see if I can find some tile that's close. Go to the tile down here. This looks kind of close to the tile that we have in our house. And then my walls are a light gray color. So I'll go to the colors. Let's choose this color. And there we go. Everything is to scale. All the dimensions are exact. And this gets it looking pretty close to what it will look like in real life. So an awesome tool to use. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sure there are plenty of other ways to get to this point, but this is the way I do it. Um, and it works for me for all of my projects. So hope you enjoyed. Step five is to come up with a list of tools and materials that you'll need for the project. For the projects that I share with you guys, I always make a list of the tools and the materials that I used and I save them to a blog post or if it's a video tutorial, I'll save the list to the description of each of those videos. So if you're not sure what tools or materials to use, find a resource who has done the project before so you can learn from them. A few tools to help me determine the amount of materials I need for a project. I use the feet and inches calculator. It's an app on my phone. I'm not great at math, especially when it comes to fractions. So this app really helps me there. If I use plywood for a project, I like to use this website that helps to determine 
determine how many cuts you can fit on a four by eight sheet of plywood. Step six is to establish a budget and a timeline. I tend to shop at Home Depot, so I will go to their website ahead of time and use my material list to get prices for all of those items. Now, you're always going to have hiccups where you buy too much or too little for the project, but doing this ahead of time will give you a more accurate idea of what your project is going to cost so you can stay in budget. For the timeline, set realistic goals for when you'd like to have the project finished. Having an end date will give you that motivation to work hard and finish your project on time. I tend to always underestimate how long these projects will take me and I think that's the case with a lot of you guys. So give yourself some grace and don't stress out too much if you're not sticking right to your timeline. The final step, step seven, is to actually execute your project. I like to break my project down into steps or phases and write them down on a piece of paper so that it doesn't seem so daunting and I can check each step off as I go. Also, don't panic when your project doesn't go as planned. Your walls aren't always going to be square and your floors aren't always going to be level, so your measurements will most likely be off a little bit. You just have to adapt and overcome and expect to take extra trips to the hardware store because if you're like me, you're always going to forget something or run out of something. So with all that in mind, I hope this helps you a little bit when it comes time to plan for your next big home project. I hope you guys learned something from the SketchUp tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please, please subscribe to my channel and go find me on Instagram at Stephanie to see what I'm up to there.